So here's VMware vCenter. Notice we've got one, two, three ESXi servers. So that's these two servers on the left-hand side, as well as this ESXi server on the right-hand side. I've got a separate management network that's allowing me to manage these devices. In this environment, the IP connectivity across the core network, so the 8200-5900-5406, has been established. So I can manage all these devices from the central management console. Notice I have a DCN VSD. That's the VM that I'm connecting to via this browser. I also have multiple VSCs. So one, that's gonna be used for VMware devices, and one that's gonna be used for KVM. The one VSC resides on this ESXi server, and the other one resides on this ESXi server. I have one, two VRSs. These are Neoarch Networks VRSs. So one is running here, and a third one is actually running directly on KVM. It's been installed directly on the Ubuntu KVM server, so it's not shown in this list. Now, HP have what are called VSRs. These are different to VRSs. A VSR is similar to a Cisco CSR. It's basically a virtual router. They are only used for doing inter-VLAN routing and advertising BGP routes and OSPF routes in this topology. They are not really part of the core Neoarch Networks scenario that I'm trying to explain. I also have an Ubuntu DNS server. I have a VMware vCenter server, which is what I'm connecting to at the moment. And notice I have some user VMs. So user VM 1, 2, 3, and 4, those user VMs are hosted on these ESXi servers. So two of them on one ESXi server, two of them on a separate ESXi server. This ESXi server doesn't have any user VMs, but it could have. I am hosting, however, two user VMs in KVM. So I've connected to the KVM server, which is on the right-hand side in our topology. And if I type Versh list, you can see that I have two VMs, VM2 and VM3, running within KVM. So there are two virtual machines on this KVM server, two VMs running in ESXi on that server, and two VMs running in ESXi on this server. So that's sort of the topology. Let's have a look on the VSD. The so first thing is when I go to domains, I can set up different domains and I can set up different subnets. So let me make that a bit bigger. So in this topology, we've got domain one, we've got a zone, we've got different subnets, and we'll be able to see if any devices are connected to subnets. So as an example, there is a VM interface connected to the subnet. And if we move to the right here, we'll be able to see that we have user VM1 connected to that subnet. Here we've got user VM4, user VM2 connected to subnet two, and user VM2 connected to subnet three. Now you might not use this interface when managing your network, you might use an orchestration tool external to this, such as OpenStack. But what I wanna show you, some of the power that you see through this GUI interface. So as an example, I can see two VSCs and a VSD connected to this VSP. Notice we see the name, Neoarch VSP. So even though this is an HP product, I'm still seeing the Neoarch name. So different services are running on the VSD, on the VSC, we can see some VRSs. We can see as an example that this VRS is down, but this VRS and this VRS are connected, and there's a VRS connected to VSC2. As an example, this VSC2 is running on the ESXi server over here. The VRS, however, is running in KVM. So this VRS is running within KVM, and these are the two VMs running within KVM. So to make the point, if I type sudo versh shutdown VM2, VM2 is gonna be shut down, and what you'll see now is that the state is shut off, whereas this VM has the state of running. If we start VM2 again, notice the state is running. We have visibility 
of the virtual machines through the VSD. And it gets a lot more powerful than this. I'm just showing you some of the basics. Here's an example of, let's say, user VM2 running within ESXi. So if I power that down and go back to the VSD, as that powers down, you should see the state change from running to off. Notice shut off. So I have visibility of a KVM host and an ESXi host. I'll start that host up again. Notice the state is changed to running. There are a lot of options available through this interface. I can see monitoring information. I can see static routes. I can see policies. I can see as an example, the IP addresses that have been dynamically allocated to these devices. So here's an example of user VM4. It's been allocated an IP address of 172.16.2.5 by the VRS. And if we open up a console to that device, I specify DHCP, notice IP address allocated 172.16.2.5, default gateway 172.16.2.254. That's the default gateway that we see through the VSD. So we have a lot of visibility information. Users can also not change their IP addresses. If they manually change their IP addresses, traffic would not be permitted.